you're back home for the 2010 Perth Fashion Festival. What's your role with the event? Uh, international ambassador is the official role, yep. and um, in, a, in practice, that is um, obviously supporting the, the event from a broad spectrum of ways. All the way from my uh, my role in a, uh, in New York is as fashion photographer. So, what can I bring um, and help to resource the fashion festival? Um, and my own personal sort of uh, involvement with the fashion festival is really coming up to speed with where the industry is within Perth and Western Australia at the moment. Terrific. Now, in recent years, Perth's seen um, a lot more exposure regarding its designers and models, people like Ruth Tarvitas, Aurelia Costarella, Gemma Ward and the like. What uh, do you think our strengths are from Western Australia and do we possess a certain quality which works well within the fashion industry? Well, in, in terms of surviving out in that very harsh fashion business world, we've got great qualities. You know, this the, the, the sort of down-to-earth education, social education that you get in Perth is is, well in Western Australia is invaluable when you're out there mixing it up and um, there's this whole uh, perception that, that, that it's a fashion Easter environment but the truth of it is the more that you can just be real and, and um, direct and you'll be more, much more successful. In terms of the talent side of it, you mentioned some, some great talent that's yep. been evolving. Um, what is great is I think the talent's here and the talent's always existed. What's happening now that I'm seeing is the support for the talent. You know, they're starting to nurture the talent, recognise that you know a great designer can lead to opportunities for um, a great marketing person, for a great business mind who can get behind it. So there's a whole there's this whole business that can grow out of it, and all these opportunities that can go out of it. So uh, it's um, it's yeah, it's quite that it, it's great to watch the support getting behind the industry here. Yeah, terrific. And and like I said, having you here for the Perth Fashion Festival is is an example of that. Now, last night you celebrated your release of V2 your latest uh, book. What was the inspiration behind that? Pretty shallow and uh, <laughs> I can say I have various uh, sort of extensions of my career. I've mm -hmm. got a great passion for indigenous culture, I have a great passion for landscapes, um, but certainly a part of the commercial success that I have is around things like Victoria's Secret and then a, a lot Thank of um, <laughs> and a lot of uh, um, sort of artistic uh, nude portraiture. Yep. So this book was very simple inspiration. I was on Necker Island, which is Richard Branson's home island, yep. and I was shooting for the um, uh, 2010 Victoria's Secret swim campaign, and I had collected together what I think are the the eight best girls in the world yep. in terms of what's coming next. Yep. And I was, you know, doing all this swimwear, and I turned to the present Victoria's Secret and to Richard Branson and said can you guys just excuse me because I've got to shoot a book in yeah. between this and that was the inspiration for the book it was just so beautiful having that talent there and then I wanted to play into the strengths of like the, the artistic interpretation of the of, of the place and the girls and you were saying there the eight next best what do you think makes the best with models what separates the good from the great um, a very fine line mm -hmm. sometimes it's marketing positioning it, come, it originates from the talent themselves um, but uh, I'd say there are certain aspects that are very important right now. Diversity, mm -hmm. um, you know, it really is a global village now. And um, in some ways, one of the great things I've seen in Perth is um, what has snuck up on us is this great diversity, diversity of culture. We have so many influences from, from different places. Um, so a part of what inspired me in terms of that collection of um, talent for that book was, and certainly casting that, was the diversity factor. Um, I noticed there's, there's a Brazilian girl, there's a Hawaiian Girl, there's Miranda Kerr, and they all sort of represent, in terms of a visual aesthetic and who they are, a, a, a sort of a, a diverse part of this universe that is beauty and fashion. Yep. Um, I think at one times it was sort of homogenized and like beauty was interpreted one way. Yeah. You know, it whether it, like these kind exactly of things. maybe it was the Marilyn Monroe way or what, whatever it may be. Yep. But now I think the the vision is so much broader in in terms of what beauty is, yep. and um, there, they, every one of those girls had their own magnetism. In terms of what separates good from great, it's it's really a nuance. I work with a lot of really good models, yep. and then I work with a few that are great. Yep. And the ones that are great, um, you see at the moment you shoot them, you, you get a sense of it. Sometimes you're shooting when they haven't made it, and you realize we've got to get behind this person. They're yep. terrific, you know, really terrific. And um, uh, a part of that is the way they manage their personal brand, mm -hmm. um, obviously. The genetic lottery has to be won in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to start with that. You can't be four uh, foot eight. Or exactly. <laughs> you know, you just did. You just got to. There's got to be a reality check that yeah. uh, you. You know, you. Um, you've got to have that reality check of genetics. Yeah. Um, and then the the final piece of it is those that are able to separate in their mind the brand from the person. And, and what I mean by that is, if you get caught up in it, 
um, where it starts to affect your person and you yeah. get insecure because of all the things that happen, um, it'll bring you down very quickly and you won't yeah. be successful. If you can separate, like my, I use this as, a, as my brand and my vehicle as a, as a model yeah. and think with your sort of business brain, but on a personal level, not take it all personally, yeah. you've got a long career ahead of you. And just like directors on set with their, has their relationship with actors, what's your relationship with the models that you work with and the kind of environment that you try and produce to be conducive for success? Um, as, as the technical world has progressed, um, the line has become very blurred between photography and directing. So I used to direct commercials separately to, to print and now it's all sort of collapsed into one world where any, uh, now you look at it as campaign, the next campaigns I'll do when I leave here will be sort of combined, I'll be shooting the print, I'll be directing the videos, directing the TV spots, all is one thing. So I create an environment that's conducive to the whole side of it and I'd say on a personal intimate level, no matter how large the production gets, sometimes they have to get very large. They can be anything from small to 15 people to large 50 people. Um, but the most important thing that I try to nurture is between me and the, and the talent, it's personal and it's quiet and all the clutter and noise and all of the production activity yeah. is kind of kept isolated from what we have to do together. Um, I try to talk direct. If there's a lot of management around, especially when you get into the superstar sort of... Um, uh, I, yeah, the celebrity status of actors and actresses and uh, when you're in that space, sometimes they come with a lot of management, but I tend to cut through that very quickly and say, I need to talk to you and talk about what we're going to do. Yep. And like most businesses or like most professions, personal connectivity and is... Partnership. partnership. is a great word and it's exactly what it is. You, you know, you engage with people in a partnership and um, because it's, it's not me telling you what to do. This is my concept. This is how I'd like to sculpt it, get the input and then let's partner and figure it out together. Terrific, and so on that note, I'm interested to get an insight into Russell James at work. How do you approach a job artistically and conceptually? Um, every, every job comes with a different sort of mission critical. Sometimes it'll come down from a big brand and it'll be, this is who we think we are and we trust you to execute this, meaning there's a kind of a lot of uh, walls and boundaries that yep. you're working into. But the best projects usually come with a brand or, or sometimes it's a brand can be a person and a music artist that will come in and say this is sort of the direction I want to go um, um, and I consider at that point that they own the ship and I become the captain of the ship yeah. and that's the kind of metaphor that I put to it I'm like okay you may own the ship but you know I'm the one that's going to navigate this through now so uh, creatively I start to think about who they are what they are what the, what the mission is and then creativity is in some some level instinct and it's on some level exposure to a lot of different things. And you know, constantly you saw this and you pull it into that. Um, and I build it in layers. So I start with what's, what's the goal? Um, take a goal orientation that we want to, you know, uh, Mary J. Blige to appeal to um, this particular demographic because she's working for Fashion Rocks, which raise money for. I start there, but then creatively that's the fun part. Like how do we visualize that? What would she look like if she was a 1930s film star? And, and, yeah. and I, I sculpt around. Um, so I guess the, I, the short answer is what's the goal? and then what's the creativity needed to get there. And just hope you're not driving the Titanic with the whole shit metaphor. It, exactly, and let me tell you, it's, uh, there's a lot of responsibility, that, I mean, especially dealing with multi-billion dollar brands. In one way, they give you a lot of responsibility. On the other, if you end up going into the iceberg, it's, um, you know, it's a bit you, scary. Yeah, you, well, you start looking for the blade that's swinging like this because you know it's coming your way. You know, there's no getting out of it. You really are, the rubber meets the road and you, you take the impact if it doesn't work out. Wholeheart.